Der er langt fra Engelbald med vikingerne i Tromsø til New York rapper Nas og hans homeboys i Queens. Men én ting har de til fælles. På hver deres måde tager de den samme melodi til sig, skrevet for snart 50 år siden i England. En melodi, de fleste af os kender i en eller anden udgave. You know what I mean? If you didn't have Apache, then... You people had went to another party, man. <laughs> you had to have Apache. I 1959 ser den unge sangskriver Jerry Lorden Western-filmen Apache. Filmen handler om Masai, den sidste Apache-kriger og hans kamp mod den hvide mand. Hovedrollen som Apache-indianer Masai spilles af den blåøjede Hollywood-held Burt Lancaster. Inspireret af stemningen går Lorden hjem og skriver en instrumental melodi, som man kalder Apache, ligesom filmen. Først giver han melodien til den populære engelske guitarist, Bert Whedon. Men Lorden bryder sig ikke om Whedons version, som man synes er tam og mangler drama og indlevelse. Nogle måneder senere møder han backing bandet til en af Englands største stjerner, Cliff Richard. April of 1960, we were Cliff and the Shadows were touring on a on a bus, and uh, it was a package show. And one of the guys on the show was called Jerry Lorden, and we were talking to Jerry. We said, "Look, we've had uh, the Shadows have had three flops. You know, we didn't have a hit. We had three records out, and they didn't. None of them became a hit." And he said, uh, "Well, I've got a tune. Can I play? I've got a." A tune you might like, and he went to the back of the bus, and he came to the front of the bus with a little ukulele, and he sang Apache on this ukulele. He played the chords and went down, 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 down. And we loved the tune, and we took it to our recording uh, manager called Nori Paramore, who was our producer, and he said, "Yeah, it's a lovely tune." <coughs> he said, "But I'd like you to." We're going to record this other song. It was called Quartermaster's Stores, which was an old army song. We did the two tracks, and Apache sounded different. It was just different. Um, and he said, no, the other tune is going to be the A-side. And we said, oh, Nori, Apache's better. Anyway, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll take them home to my daughters. I'll take the two tunes home and see which one they like. The two daughters loved Apache, and he said, oh, well, okay, Apache would be the A-side. And uh, in July, we had a hit. Apache og The Shadows får stor indflydelse på en hel verdens unge musikere, som får travlt med at investere i elektriske guitar og samles omkring rejsegrammofonerne for at lytte de nye toner af. Suddenly elevated from being Cliff's group to top of the bill anywhere. It, no matter where we went, you know, we, we went all over the place. Thailand, the Far East and all over Europe. And there were shadow bands. And most of these groups, the, the lead guitarist had looked like Hank, and the, the, the bass player dyed his hair blonde like Jet, you know. They all wanted to be like the shadows. Jerry Lorden wrote the tune. Down, 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 down. Hank wrote. Da da da, da 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 da, da da da, da da da. You know the intro and the outro. Hank was the first guitar hero that everybody wanted to be like. Because we didn't look great, you know, we weren't um, James Dean. We had pimples and 
So everybody think, well, if Hank can make it, we can make it. You know, he gave hope to millions of kids in the bedrooms, you know, or tennis rackets, all playing tennis, all pretending doing the, doing the steps and stuff, you know. Med Apache og instrumentalmusikken bliver det nemmere at danne et orkester. Man behøver ikke at se specielt godt ud, man behøver ikke kun synge, og man behøver ikke være et unikum på guitar. Alt hvad man behøver er nogle venner og et par instrumenter, og et backing band har nu mulighed for selv at komme helt frem i rampelyset. There wasn't a group before the shadows like this. You didn't have, you know, you had the big stars, you had, uh, you know, Elvis and all these people and, and Little Richard, but they weren't groups as such. And then the Beatles came in '63. Uh, and the Mersey beat thing, but all, you know, lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass guitar, drums, mm. which was the Shadows format. Det er ikke bare vokalgruppernes gennembrud, der hurtigt gør The Shadows gammeldags. Ungdommen er i voldsom udvikling i 60'erne. Går et kamera tæt på den nye ungdom, er forarvelsen aldrig langt væk, og mange voksne forstår slet og ret ikke ungdommen. De mener, at ungdom ikke er andet end rytme, støj, opposition og ballade, og spørger, hvor er vores gode gamle livsværdier. Den gamle dame ovenpå har taget gas, Jævelen har stemplet. Men til trods for, at The Shadows hurtigt går bag om dansen, klarer Apache sig overraskende godt. De næste 20 år bliver den taget op af et hav af musikere, lige fra de gule til de mere velfriserede. Den får også en tur på diskodansegulvet af Tommy Seber. Selvom de fleste udgaver stadig lyder godt, eller i det mindste har stor underholdningsværdi, er det få, der bliver andet end parenteser i musikhistorien. Men i midten af 70'erne dukker en Apache-version op, som er langt mindre kendt end The Shadows-udgaven, men mindst lige så vigtig. Fokus er nu ikke længere på guitarerne, derimod gælder det nu tror. Apache like changed my life. Right? You know what I mean? I, I knew it from then, and there's a lot of different versions of uh, of Apache, but Michael Viner's and the Incredible Bongo Band—that's it, man. That's like the the staple for hip hop music, man. 